Discord button. All right, first item on the agenda is review and vote to approve the minutes from our January 8th meeting. And move to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes. I'll do a roll call vote. Vote. Yeah. Vote. Choice. Aye. Betty. Aye. Brenda. Aye. Susan. Aye. And myself. Aye. So that passes. The next item is to get right back into where we left off a couple of weeks ago. Turn it over to Brian. So I have that as um, section six. Workplace policies. Yes. Everybody's on that. Um, so how we've done it the past couple of meetings is we kind of just talk through this and if people have things that they want to uh, mention or bring up, then we just sort of go for it. Um so that's page um thirty-four on this document, right? Section six where six workplace policies. Um, I, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, mine's 30. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they get they get different ones when we print, but it's section six workplace policies. Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. Yep. Um, so this attendance policy statement. Then the next part is ethics and conflict of interest statements. And both of these are really state law that we're just mentioning again in the policies. C talks about nepotism. And then these all have a link here of policies that are attached. He talks about political activity and the fact that employees shouldn't be engaging in political activity while on the job. He talks about outside employment in political office. I had a, I had, I was just thinking about that first statement here that uh, employees may not engage in outside employment that could, that causes or could potentially cause a conflict of interest. I'm not really sure what that means. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of a situation where that, where that could happen. And it seems like if somebody worked for, I was trying to think in the highway world, right? If somebody works for a, another paving company or something, that I don't really know. So that's certainly a possibility. I also look at it as um, being very likely to be a police department issue, too. Um, a full time officer for Whaley might be working part time in another community. But does that pose the potential for a conflict of interest? I, right. That's that's what I'm questioning. What is it? What? How is that conflict of interest being defined? So I was thinking that, like, if somebody is working for another company, and let's think of it in the highway, because I can think of a better example. If they actually okay. work part time for uh, a company that we might hire to do some work, then there might be a conflict of interest. Yes. Uh, if they're trying to make decisions about how we spend money. Now, I think a part time, a full time officer who works part time in another town is not really making decisions about how the police department spends its money. So I think that's less potential for a conflict of interest. Yeah, I guess I was reading it more of, of a conflict, not maybe of interest, but a conflict in regards to if. The town needs the employee, and the employee is working for another community. But okay. I just this afternoon went through the conflict of interest training because my number was up the historical commission for that. And we have a policy on conflict of interest, which I think covers all of that. So I don't know that we need to stated here because there's a clear policy that if someone you know what to do in those situations yeah 
I would just I don't like the idea of could potentially cause a conflict of interest. Well, it, I, I don't know how to how to deal with that. So I wasn't sure if, if we wanted to not include the first sentence. I don't think we need it because we've got a conflict of interest. Um, just on the previous page, we reference the whole conflict of interest policy, which addresses that. Yeah. So I don't think we need it here. The following sentence, I, 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 I agree with you. It's, yeah, if you just merge the first two sentences, that's going to pick up the, if the unlike in the unlikely event that somewhere there's a conflict of interest, it, as long as it, if you merge the first two sentences, I think you're pretty much covered. In the unlikely event that there is some kind of conflict of interest, we don't need to say it here. It doesn't interfere with the efficient operations of the town. That's really all you need to say. If we struck everything in the first sentence after the word in, town employees may not engage in, strike everything out, pick up in the second sentence, outside inter employment, sorry, strike the words is permitted, and then pick up again so long as the employment does not interfere with the efficient operations of the town. Sorry, that might have been too fast, but I can give you my marker. Or, or even, I, I, I sort of feel like outside employment, just hold on to the first sentence and maybe strike it in your mind, but outside employment is permitted. So long as the employment does not interfere with the efficient operations of the town or cause a conflict of interest. It's permitted unless those two things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it reads better. Um, it's kind of less scratching. Okay. Yes. Please respect both the schedules with the town. You may not change your schedules to work for another entity. I think that seems appropriate. We will want the town to have a fair uh, Yeah, and even here we reference the Massachusetts conflict of interest law again. So we'll cover it. Yeah. The patient time may be used for month and pre approved. Do we need to state that other leave time can't be used there? Say that again, please. So let's say, let's say that an employee used sick time to, and then went to work for somebody else. Okay. That's not something that we can commit, right? Or that's not something that we would want to. Because you said sick time is for when, when you do sick, that's all your duties, but. Is that any different from somebody using sick time to go to teach? Neither is acceptable. Right. What about personal time? I think personal time is that is their choice. How they use that, it's, it's for their- right. So that's and so personal time is like vacation time in that sense. That yes, the, the you, only you could personal time versus vacation time is at least I accept personal time requests at the like last minute type of thing, whereas vacation tends to be more planned out and mm -hmm. given and more likely to say, I'm gonna take three days off or five days off, and it's more of a planned vacation aspect, whereas personal time tends to be more of the last minute type of thing, like, uh, you know, um, my my dog died last night, I need today off, or something of that nature. Right. Uh, but the personal time is also for a shorter period. Yeah, time. You, only, you only have, if you're full-time working 40 hours, you only have two days. Right. In a year. So I don't have a problem with personal time being allowed in this case. Do we need to specify at all? What was say vacation time may be used? 
Why are we saying that? I don't think it's we It's sort of an invitation to, to do it right. and they can use the vacation time. I do think that could all be strike it. But yeah, we could strike that sentence then. I think all the other descriptions of the various kinds of time off <laughs> would um, kind of have would it would make a, a I think a logical person say, oh, I could use vacation time if I can get that pre-approved, or I could use personal time if it fits into the amount of time I have. Yeah, I think so. And I think Susan's got a point there that we could just strike that whole sentence. The vacation time may be used, but must be pre-approved. <laughs> it's got to be pre-approved anyway, right? Okay. And then it talks, uh, we don't need this sentence, right? Is there a responsibility of all town employees to abide by mass CLI? I don't. We just said it. It's, right. it's going to be right. Get rid of yeah. it. Uh, our next part talks about solicitations. I feel like we're being more specific than we need to be. Exactly. Like scouting popcorn. In, in the real world, do you have people leaving solicitations in break rooms? Does it offend anyone? Yeah, it, it, actually became, years, so. <laughs> it became a thing at the law firm I worked for, which is bigger. There were 80 or 90 employees, and then people felt pressure to, you know, to sponsor Susie's walk right. to raise right. money. Yeah. And it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we never found a good answer to it because a firm wasn't willing to say, no, you can't do that. But yeah, it was a thing. So I don't know. What is it like in the real world? Do you have break rooms where people feel pressure to? No, it's not here. No. I don't know. It's not it's really an yeah. issue at all. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 I mean, I guess yeah. it's something because if it does become problematic, yeah. we want something. But. Yeah, but I'm thinking if we took the second sentence, uh, town employees may be fundraising materials and promotional materials in a break room. Period. Period. So that. You mean that you want the ability for supervisors to solicitate, sorry, to solicit the purchase of materials by subordinates? You know, it's just, well, I'm saying it's a small town aspect. Yeah, I mean, yeah geez, got it. If, yeah. if your kid is selling, if, if, right, out my, right, why can't I? have the right to say buy a box of Girl Scout cookies if all my other the other employees in the office will be the same thing. Yeah, but I don't think you're the way it's written, you're allowed to. You're allowed to put the material on the table and someone might read it and sign up to buy some Girl Scout cookies. Right. But you're not allowed to ask them. It doesn't sound like supervisors are, it doesn't sound like employees are. So I defer to the real world because I'll say again, don't have a policy that you're not going to follow. It's better not yeah. to have the policy at all. So maybe start again. I don't know. We don't have anything presently for that belief somewhere. I mean, maybe the first two sentences are fine. I mean, would we have a problem with somebody putting, I don't know if they even still exist, Avon catalog? I mean, that's, I'm looking at the last sentence of that's a personal game for his right. own style yeah. of the mountain. Do we care? I don't, yeah, I don't have any problem with it actually as it's written. I don't think we need to take anything out of it. I think so, what they add into it clarifies that, you know, if you're doing a, like a fundraising, it's not for yourself, right? So they're saying, yeah, like buying a raffle ticket for the quilt at the elementary school and somebody in the office has a kid in the elementary school, they could leave that out and they just can't pester people about it, right? Um, and supervisors would be 
I mean, they should know this, right? but uh, supervisors being in the position of power can't solicit purchase of materials by subordinates, including fundraising activities. So because of the power, right? And then nobody, supervisor or employee or anybody can post their artisans, crafts, and greeting cards. So so we don't see an ad for Keith's maple syrup in the town hall or town offices, right? He's not posting materials and those are all for his personal gain and maybe everybody knows it and they can go, they can go contact him outside of work, right? But he couldn't be pressuring people or even, even asking people at work if they would like to buy his maple syrup products, right? I mean, I think as it's written, it's clear. And it might seem like those examples, scouting popcorn and daffodils are not ones you've done recently, but those change over time. I think people understand what those are. I don't know. I mean, I, I sort of still have a problem with the aspect of and I'll make an example of a supervisor in one of the, our departments has children in the elementary school and they're selling quilt raffle tickets. Why can't that supervisor bring it in and put it on the break table? And that's, but yeah, it says I, right under any circumstance, Supervisors not allowed to. Yeah, I I tend to agree with you, but I think there's a difference between leaving the flyer on the table in the break room and approaching subordinates, making okay. them feel yeah, I, And that's fine, but I, mean, I didn't read it that way. I, yeah, I, the, the language isn't clear that that's what's meant, but to right. me, I'm that's the difference. That you can you can put the flyer out, but you can't ask people who report to you because then they feel pressured and it becomes a conflict of interest. Yeah, does solicit mean leaving it on the table or just does solicit mean right. actually I, engage? I'm thinking that right. if you bring it in, it's solicitation. I mean, they're the very first word, solicitation of employees. Um, it goes on to say you can leave them. Well, I don't know. They're just kind of Well, the difference there in the first sentence is that in your opinion, versus in the break room. Okay, I mean, let's just leave it. But is it clear, if we're leaving it, is it clear that when we're saying supervisors are not allowed in, in any circumstances to solicit the purchase, that we mean ask the person to buy versus can the supervisor leave the flyer on the table? At the very least, I think the supervisor should be able to put it on the table. I agree. Could add the word actively, actively solicit so that it leaving it on the table gets a little bit farther from solicit. I'm not allowed in any circumstance to actively solicit. I guess that's not great either, is it? <laughs> but that's where I would put it, to actively solicit. Do we need the language in any circumstance? Supervisors are not allowed to actively solicit. Yeah, that's probably about as good as we can do. Or directly solicit one or the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Directly maybe might be better than that. Yeah. Yeah, directly. I agree. Because then you're split the infinitive. <laughs> English major. <laughs> directly. So you got that, Brian? Yeah, right. I like that. You take out in any circle. Yeah. Next section G, open meeting law. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we even need it? Are we obey the law? No, it's superimposed on the whole policy and everywhere. <laughs> we don't really get them. Except for questions concerning it. Maybe, I don't know, is that valuable? Oh, I Are you thinking of a new employee reading the personnel policy manual to get familiar with 
working in a municipality where they've never worked in a municipality before. They're like, oh yeah, we, we it's just like informational in that sense. But are we worried about that? Maybe not. I don't see a downside to keeping that. Right. Okay. Town property, town property and personnel for any personal use whatsoever is prohibited. At, at first, I thought that sounded strange, like the use of personnel mm -hmm. right, to use, but then I guess it could be somebody trying to get free labor. Yeah, so, um, that's what I took it to mean. Broad is the next section. Attached. Again, it was one of those where I, my initial reaction was like, yep, that's that's right. But then it like it was kind of too obvious, but then it talked about the, you know, it's not only that you, you can't commit fraud, but what responsibilities do you have as an employee to help prevent it or detect it? So yeah. I thought that was good one. Where is our full fraud policy? But in the in the we have like 12 policies, so we're reading all this stuff. And the <laughs> need is in the 12 That's policies. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jay talks about whistleblower protection. Okay, severe weather closing. So, right now, the library operates independently of the town offices in terms of closings. Um, so if we're gonna, we don't necessarily have a unified uh, approach to that. So right now it's actually the responsibility of the select board? Um, right now it would be, um, I confer with the select board chair for the for the town offices and the library director confers with the share of the library trustees and has um makes those decisions yeah right. the, the schools do the schools and the schools do the schools yeah right. is the librarian is she Considered a full time employee, yes, she is right. Or is she still under? No, she's over 20. All right, so I was like, what happens in the library if their trustees say it's going to snow, coming to blizzard today? You're closed, we don't want you coming in. Yeah, how does that employee have to use their vacation time or? Right, I, I, that's the question I was going to bring up was, should we stay here? So there's times where the, and I think what we've done in the past is, if a decision is made to close the town offices, well, it was initially um, that, that we would pay people for, for that time of what they were regularly scheduled to do. Um, but now since the, pandemic, there's this more, okay, most people have, well, some people have the ability to work from home. Remote. Work remote. So, I mean, it's, I think that's something we should talk about and, and spell out here. Is there a preference for, to the extent possible, that people work from home? Or is it snow day and everybody can go outside and have fun and get paid for... You know, it's going to come out wrong, but but not. I was going to say doing nothing, but not doing work. Um, can you do your work from home? Yeah. You can. Yeah, my work doesn't get done. <laughs> we're closed. I so know, but I I know it's snow day. You were here doing. Yeah. It got worse. So. Yeah. Well, I got to stay throughout the duration of the storm, so I could drive home later. It was for better because <laughs> I had two meetings. So. <laughs> Be safe, please. Yeah, I mean, it created what it this in many cases does is it creates sometimes tension because some if an employee is allowed to stay home and not have to work and not and get paid and not have to use their time off, whereas other people 
are still having to work, then they might say, how come I don't get a day off somewhere else? I know my guys a lot of times complain, but when it's 97 degrees out and hotter than heck, and they're expected to still go out there and mow the roadsides and, and sweat, and they say, how come just because somebody gets a day off in the middle of the winter, why should I get a day off because it's too hot out? You know, it's, so. Is that accounted for now? You know, your guys don't get the day off because of snow, but everyone else does is accounted for. I don't know how it's so. I mean, that they get like a floating day. To, no. No. No, and that's something that I think we should talk about. Yeah, maybe. that's equity. Because equity as far as, if, in the past, I think for the most part, people were having, if like the librarian should have to then use a vacation day. Is that fair to that employee to force them? What if the employee says, no, I, I can make it to work. I want to come in. Right. Or to make up the hours within the pay period or something. I mean, what do we do? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's Right. And it's not like it's the employee's choice necessarily, right? I mean, if we close the town offices, they're not in on this decision. It's not their decision either to take a vacation day or to. I mean, the school, we, that's a mute point. They're, they're not, they're going to make up make the up. day anyways. If they have a snow day, then they have to make it up at the end of June. So mm -hmm. they're still going to put in the same amount of days. So mm -hmm. what if we, if, is there a way to word this? I mean, we want to say <clears throat> you are expected to work the hour when we are closed. Uh, you're expected to work the hours, and this is not the right way to say it, at some point. For those of you who can work that day from home, that's how you work your eight hours. But for those who can't work from home, they have to work those hours at some other point. They get the day off, but at least then it's equitable that everybody has to work their required hours. I'm not sure if I'm being clear. No, I know it's hard to say. It just gets into like a whole like bank of food work. And I was thinking the other way that it's a snow day, people should get the day off. And if you don't get the day off because you're on Keith's crew, then you should have a a floating day off no. that you can take later, but that may not be right. what the practice is or what people want. So, no. is there any or it doesn't get the work done? Like you were saying, right. you have to get the work done. <clears throat> is there any of this built into like the existing, say, I'll say salary here that you know, someone who probably can't, you know. I don't know, kids in school, whatever the reason is, that they can't really work all their hours from home. And snow day at school, maybe it coincides with the snow day at work. And that's just uh, uh, <laughs> just maybe a happy coincidence for them. Um, but I don't feel like I want to penalize that person necessarily. But that's maybe the job of, and uh, I'll pick on, uh, Jessica, administrative assistant. You know, administrative assistant, maybe they're not expected to come in on a snow day or to make up the hours of a snow day. But when you sign up to be on the highway crew, you sort of, ex that's the expectation of the job. And it, maybe it's not really reflected in the wages we pay, but um, it seems to me like, some of these things are should just be part of the expectation of the job, and I don't know. I mean, I feel I'm trying to think of how does my employer do that. Everybody from facilities comes in on snow days and shovels snow. Uh, students and faculty and administrative staff do not come in and shovel snow, uh, and we all do what we can to. I mean, some people do end up working from home, yeah, but but there's no like we could get we could run ourselves in circles trying to enforce something 
um, and probably not not do ourselves any favors there. So I sort of I sort of feel like maybe the exception is the highway crew. And I know there's when especially when there's a snowstorm, there's lots of chances for overtime for folks who are doing the plowing. It also affects certainly the full-time police officers as well. Because if there's a storm Jim is not going to say, you know, stay home. He's going to, he requires his officers to be in as well because chances are there's going to be more accidents. Mm -hmm. than that. Yep. Yeah. So, like yeah. in your choice, what you're mentioning at your employment, how, so like this, the facility crew, they have to come in and shovel snow. Your, or plow your or whatever the thing happens to be. Yeah. Staff. They are allowed to stay home and they get compensated by staying home and not having to work? Or do they have to take I, the time? I have never heard that they have to take a a, a vacation day for that. Um, but I can ask. Um, I almost think maybe we should. I don't know what other towns do. Maybe we should. We could ask, I suppose. That he could be a... I think it's a lot different because we're a small town and we don't have that many employees. So it's hard, but we need to have some sort of policy so people know where to go back on and be consistent. So it's fair for all. Yeah, I, I want to be fair. I mean, the opposite, another option is the opposite of what I said before, where if the town is officially closed, anyone who works that day, get you know, the highway like queue through, you know, your, gets comp time for that time. Floating, yeah. Do you guys have the theory of floating holiday? Maybe just my firm had it, but it's just like random holidays where they, the office, this is how we did it, I'm not saying it works here, but Indigenous People's Day, Palm City, like not Martin Luther King Day anymore, but it used to be. So you had to work, there's like 10 random holidays and you had to work two of them and you could take them off. And if you worked, you'd get a floating holiday that you could take another. It's just an extra day off that you take because you worked when it was sort of a holiday. I and mean, it, it might work for snow days that people who work on a snow day like Keith's crew or the police who have to work for those conditions get the same benefit that the people who got the day off and didn't have to work from home. God. If the town closed, shuts down that. I mean, that's certainly one way of making it equitable. What's the budget implication for that? Yeah. I have to go back and report to Paul. I'm not already not his favorite person, so... Uh, and let's think that they're really... getting paid for that day and not working. It, 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 so it, it if just, they it, work, they get paid for a different day they're not working. Yeah, it's an unscheduled paid holiday that's not part of someone's sick days or personal days or vacation days because the town was closed because of weather due to no one's fault or choice or anything else. So, right, yeah, but the impact on the Budget should be neutral. Should be neutral. Neutral. Because they need to take it in lieu of a regularly scheduled work day, essentially. Well, oh, it's a day they're going to get paid for anyway. It's just that they're not going to do the work. So it's neutral right. on the budget and it just probably it loses loses the the train on. Yeah. Right, right. That's what it comes down to. The, day Which the is town loses a day of production by the yeah. day employee. It's not any financial increase. Hmm. Some people under contract, does it say anything about that in their contracts? And is, as Joyce was suggesting, is this the people who have to go work despite inclement weather, is it baked into their salary already, or is there no way of answering that? There might not be. I don't know. No, I, I don't think so either. They're only additionally compensated if they're, if they're working overtime. If the severe weather comes, then it will go. But the, I, I mean, are they salaried or hourly? I don't even know that. Which... Well, and certainly the, the hourly employee, 
is I only still want to say that, but the last picture. Yeah, I don't know how well the floating holiday concept works for an hourly worker. For a salary worker, yeah. For, I mean, just have to try to figure out the legit, the details of that because that does cause a drain to the budget if they're hourly. You're not just taking a day off that you're getting paid for that you are going to an hour year, I think. I agree with the individual coverage that day. It might not be controlled the budget. I think this could be a simple question with some of the other yeah. communities. Yeah, that's how, a good they, place how do to they start. handle it? Yeah. Maybe they have a simple solution that we could follow. Mm -hmm. Look at that. All right, we go. Um, Bell talks about drug free workplace. That's kind of is wrong, the US code citation. That fine. You're closer to law school and the bar exam than me, but I think that final S could either be sections or two small S's or something, but, but that's not a proper site for the US code. Sorry, everybody, for annoying me with that. <laughs> I love the, the curly scripty S's that mean section. Uh, alcohol and drug use. Um, I'll, I'll just think about that last sentence. Talks about if for any reason you conclude a prescription and medication, employees not able to perform the essential functions of their position, they must inform the supervisor and not come to work. I know it kind of sounds kind of obvious, <laughs> but was, you don't want somebody sh showing up who is a little bit intoxicated and says, I can't do my job. Um, mm. Yeah, and that would be a sick day then. Presumably if it's uh, related to med medication they have to take. Yeah. Can we say they must take a sick day? Or they have to talk to a little bit. If they're not able to perform the essential functions of their position, yeah, isn't that implicit? They got to take more it. Of your yeah. Isn't yeah. that implicit? Taking yeah. more of your I, I, when I read it, I was, yeah. and then I was thinking like, no, oh, <laughs> I don't know if I can make that assumption with a hundred percent conviction that somebody wouldn't show up. Mm hmm. Oh, they'd show up and inform the supervisor. You're right. And hopefully the supervisor says, get the hell out of here. Except exactly. if they're not in condition to work, are they in condition to come from? Like driving. Oh, 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 hopefully not. I mean, hopefully they are, but. Can we say and stand with this is, like, this is where we're starting to get into the gray area where the Marijuana being legal. Yeah. Marijuana may be legal, but if it leaves them in the position not able to perform the essential functions of the yeah, position, I, right. I'm, it's no different from alcohol. <clears throat> right. And and yeah. and, and yeah, I, if they're gonna take a day off, that ought to be a, a vacation day. Uh, but does that would be sort of like a a way to get to use your vacation day without prior approval? Just get too stoned. <laughs> Why do you say it should be a vacation day versus a sick day? Oh, sorry. I meant sick day. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And so, and somehow it, the, I'm so, you know it's it's late and I'm hungry so. <laughs> sick day. Yeah. So, do we um do we actually put that in writing? Let's inform the supervisor, and take a sick day. They don't have a sick day, then I guess they're taking an unpaid day. Mm -hmm. Which is the same thing that would happen if they got the flu and were out of sick days, right? They would have to take 
Yeah. I just don't want them here. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. right. Whether they take paid or unpaid leave. But... So we could say that, but this is suggesting take a sick sick on paid credit. Right. But yeah, we don't want them here. And we don't want them coming here to be sent home. Right. Regular current issue, so. And spouse smoking being prohibited. Small case P on property. Yes. Uh, o talks about safety belts. Not for any riding in town to own a vehicle. He talks about cell phone use. External and not external operator. And then you talked about uh, it's our existing town vehicle policy that was added that, that I just carried forward because it wasn't in the original draft. Now, a discussion that has come up very recently um, relating to the purchase of electronic vehicles, uh, electronic. <laughs> it's also late and I'm also hungry. But, <laughs> um, in terms of, so we have, we have, uh, this will sound very familiar to Keith, we have department heads who take vehicles home. Um, Keith does, Wayne does. So, highway, fire, police, and water department, right? Yes. Um, and how would we deal with, um, Charging overnight. If if these vehicles were charged at the department heads residence, how would that compensation work? In terms of obviously, we shouldn't ask Keith to pay for the electricity to charge the town truck. Um. So this 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 idea this question has come up, but there hasn't really been too many mm -hmm. too much discussions on it. Is there a way to calculate the, the cost, the electricity used? Because it may vary. In the vehicle you have may be different from the yes. vehicle Wayne has, so the costs are different. I, I gotta believe there must be just like I, I don't and I'll ask Joyce this question. I know you have an electric car. If you go to a to a public location, is it, that's metered somehow. You're you're paying for so mm -hmm. there's got to be a way that a charging station at a residence could be metered and let yeah it probably wouldn't be the same one I have <laughs> but um I, I think we're not going to solve this tonight but honestly right. Keith if you're if you're in are you in that car eight hours a day all eight hours like are you never parked no that is you can, you can charge crazy. whenever you're parked we had a, a couple of charging stations here and there. So and, and you don't drive that many miles. You're Correct. seldom gonna need an overnight charge. An overnight charge would be if you got it flat down to empty and you needed to get up to 300 miles the next day. That's an overnight charge. But if you if, if basically if you change your habit or develop the habit of Whenever you're near working near the charging station, you plug it in. That's it. And yeah, I mean, that might work. You know, I, I don't I don't know. I'm this I is think we, yeah, we I think we would have to try and we, we might have to work with that as we get more experience. But I, I don't think we need to we're not gonna solve that tonight. And it's I don't think we're gonna be able to make a reasonable town vehicle policy. And by the time we have an electric vehicle. Somebody's going to have figured out the policy as well. Right. So that so we do not have any electric vehicles in the town right now. No. So I don't know that we can, that we need to. It's I, I think it'll be fairly soon. But I don't yeah. think we need to change this at this point. Right. Uh, yeah. We don't know what we would change it to. Um, I think we all agree that someone should be compensated for. The electricity, but electricity is cheaper than gas. 
the so require special charging stations as opposed to plugging it into whatever the outlet in the garage is? Oh, you you can plug it into your 120 volt outlet and it takes a long time to charge. The reason I ask is if a town employee has a town vehicle that they are taking home and the expectation is that they would charge it at home, does the town now have to give them the charging station and again, we don't have to solve I, I, I think we're jumping the gun. Yeah. I don't think we the employee will ever need to charge it at their home if it's the highway department. Somebody who is in the car literally the entire time and driving the entire time, then we have a problem. That's going to have to be charged outside of the time. And if they need, if they really need that car at their disposal 24 hours a day and they're driving it for the entire time they're working, then we have a problem. But we have a problem now, right? Even if somebody needs 24-hour access to it, they're not driving for eight hours a day. Right. And they're in all likelihood able to park right there at the charging station and keep it topped off, keep it up at the 80% mark. So I'm saying we don't have a problem, so we don't need a policy. We can have a charging station that's in the town, and then as we do more, we'll learn more. We can revisit this yeah. at a later time. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, all right, talks about injury workers' compensation and injured on duty. Um, the one thing that I that I, I don't think is correct is that in the first paragraph, that last sentence talked about the insurance provider makes a determination. I'm not sure that's the case, uh, but that's something I, I can double check. Um, the work the insurance company provides a determination whether they're going to reimburse the town for the claim, but I don't believe that we give up our, I don't believe the town's given up its rights to deny or accept the claim. So I just want to check that, but I don't think that's correct how it's written. And I also added the, the, the last sentence that talks about what's called injured on duty. Uh, the obligations are different for uniformed police or fire employees. Uh, they're not covered by regular uh, workers' compensation insurance. And there's such a different statute that deals with what happens to them, and there's different benefits that the town is ins partially insured against or mostly insured against. S talks about prevention of discrimination and non harassment. Prevention of discrimination and non harassment in the workplace. References and policy. Uh, T talks about workplace violence prevention. You and you talked about conduct. And that is all for section six. Or anything else that we should cover there. Moving on. Yeah, because well, we're doing it, and it, this wasn't in the markup I gave you because I did everything again today, and I realized just an English major. Sorry. Second paragraph. I just think that string of semicolon. First of all, semicolon isn't the right punctuation on all those things. It should be commas, and they should crop the list of things that. Um, if employees have an obligation to do that we at a minimum the semicolon should be commas and maybe they should be offset and indent but at a minimum they shouldn't be semicolon. where are you talking about bottom the second paragraph of you sorry at least i don't think they should be semicolons second paragraph yes. of, of you on conduct. conduct oh okay so we're not on computer technology be separated by semicolons because they're not standalone hmm. clauses there yeah. So I might just indent them and send them off, but at a minimum, I could be corrected. I could be wrong on that. It's been a long time since I was an English major. I just thought since we're doing it, I'll be simply and nitpicky and annoying. Now's the time to do it. Well, when I did this for the schools, I was like, you're teaching students, so you can't have right. grammatical <laughs> errors in your handbooks. Like, okay, I'm going to be annoying you, but can we? So if I'm wrong on that, tell me. But I, I, 
think it should not be that long. Section seven, computer technology, internet, social media. A, you talk about access and control, content. technology, resources, equipment, information. Second paragraph, <laughs> first sentence. I'll be, I'll be the picky non-English major. Thank you. There's something going on there that isn't working. <laughs> I, would, I thought we'd strike policy to establish the, the recent down as established standards for the proper yeah, it just felt redundant. Yeah. And... Okay. Good. Yeah. But we really oh. want to know we established it. <laughs> Put it in there twice. Uh, I'm pretty sure internet has a lowercase i. Uh, the internet may be a problem. Uh, just not I'm moving on to the next page. One is email, two times about appropriate use. Um, I didn't have I didn't have much really comments for that for that section. Email at the top of the page, is that federal actually a capital F? Is it built into the name of the app or is it small F? Federal Freedom of Information Act, sorry. I'll look it up. I don't think it's built into the name of the act. Uh, yeah, because it's FOIA. It's not FF. It's not FOIA. Yeah. So I, I started having com uh, more comments on, on 46 on uh, the end of to appropriate use. And what I wanted to talk about was that last section, uh, that last sentence that says personally owned devices used to officially access town email link or data will be subject to the same security related regulations. I access work email on my phone. And I, I, it's my phone is just how it came. Like, there's no other security regulations that I've ever followed with my phone to be able to access the town's uh, oh. email server when on um, you know it's Microsoft 365. Um, and I'm sure that's probably the same for many of us who 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 access on their phone or. Maybe they access from a desktop computer at, at home or, or a laptop. So either we need to change how we operate or or a combination or, or figure something out, but the, there's certainly no there's nothing that, that's in place that I know of. Well, which security related you're saying? Security related regulations. And I'm looking back and um, security systems implement. I guess that's, I was just, if, if the thing is, you should leave your phone in so that someone has to hit a password before they can open it up. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's an a easy one for someone to do for their phone. Um, Employees should either log off or revert to a password screensaver when leaving the queue for extended period. Leaving for the day, you should log off and power down. But you wouldn't necessarily log off and power down your computer at home. Because that, that might be a computer other people are using. Just trying to get uh, to kind of talking through what the problem is here. Um, what is that sentence driving at when it says to the same security regulations as as, as what? The ten, I think above they refer to no user shall violate the computer security systems implemented by the town. And I think that I assume that's what it's referring to there, mm -hmm. the same security related regulations. Although regulation, I don't see the word regulation. Or... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I guess it, I just think it needs some clarification as to mm. what what we're talking about there, and it, and it might I, I think, and I have the same comment really to the. I really don't like the social media. I really don't like the next section. Um, I think it might be worth doing some research to see what other communities do. Yeah, the first <clears throat> sentence is so like chatty and and also it has a bunch of you and we in there, which has not which doesn't show up anywhere else in the policy. We talk about the town and employees, and all of a sudden we're saying to assist you. And it, that carries on in a couple of the next sections. It, so it does, I mean, that the, the import is clear, so you can tell what they're trying to say. So it is nitpicky to say it, but this is the, like, we just, the policy talks about the town of Waitley, and it talks about employees, and now all of a sudden we're saying we and you, and it doesn't seem to fall in right. place. With the, the yeah, rest. yeah, we, we should use consistent language. Yeah. That first sentence should say the town of Waitley understands Right. It, we could reword it that way. I mm -hmm. have a problem with the whole first sentence. Well, the yeah, whole I thing is, we don't all. It's, oh, we yeah. are yeah. being happy. Well, does it, why does it matter that yeah. it's fun and rewarding, you know, a rewarding way to share life and opinion? That's not, not relevant here. It felt like it was picked where, from something. Yeah, where, 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 exactly. Where did, this, where did this get generated from? Was this ours or is this something the um, the consultant came up with? Something the consultant provided. Oh, throughout, we're paying them far too much. That's fair. Yeah, throughout B, it has it, it's like it came from a different policy and got put in here, which wouldn't be surprising because they probably have their evolving years old policy yeah. template. That they use, and then social media is somewhat relatively new, so they plopped in something that doesn't perform format wise to the rest that of the is, I'm going to blame Chat GPT. I mean, do we have a social media policy that now we should review as opposed to what they recommend? We have a yeah, we had a uh, it was more of a I believe it was more of a statement. Um, yeah. that we were going to put that we posted on the or we were supposed to have posted on like the, the Facebook page. Um, but it's, I don't, it's not as yeah. yeah. if, if people are right with it, I'd like to research some different social media policies because I'm really not a big fan of this one. Yeah. It just, I mean, I, my eyes just glaze over when I start reading it. I think the whole, I, I like the idea of researching it, the whole thing. Before you get to number one, in my mind, probably can go. And right, now it? it's like telling it's like telling them what you we're gonna have this great policy. Yeah, and so then tell them, here's the guidelines: do this, don't do that. Right. I, I I'm reading through that. I'm agreeing with Susan that if you're willing to research, other than just because. I think we all agree. Yes. Yes. Doing it for us. It, it, it's not it, like we got to convince people that this is our policy and what our policy is trying to do. It's just this is the what the policy is, right? And that's what we're supposed to be doing here. Yeah. So I'd like to I'd like to see what else is out there. Thank you. And that would take us to see mobile devices provided by the town. If we're okay, mm -hmm. not too much about um, Who has, well, I guess, who has mobile devices provided by the town? Something other than, I mean, I assume we're talking something, not just radios and pagers, right? Yeah, you would have. Police, fire, and highway. Just the department heads or the Google Things Yeah, you know, if you're including uh, some mobile radios. I guess what's a mobile device, I eh? We have portable radios that are relating to a lot of firefighters. Which is a mobile radio, it's a mobile device. So we probably need to define what we're talking about. Yeah, we're, we're talking, talking about, about cell phones. 
Tablets or tablets or another thing too. You know, they can. The police department have the. They're like a laptop. You know, laptops and things of that nature. Yeah, I mean, really, it just says that. I mean, it isn't a laptop computer considered to be a mobile device. Yeah. Are we where are we looking at this point? We're still under social media. The next section C mobile devices provided by the town. Okay, I hadn't gone far enough. Okay. I mean, it's just really saying that they need to use them for work purposes and they need to comply with security guidelines. And I don't think it's that, that big of a deal, but nobody does anybody have uh, work issued cell phone. Police, uh, police in highway. Police in highway. I don't know about fire. You know, even like if the laptops, like does the town clerk have a town laptop? Again, a lot of these yeah. mobile devices. If you're going to include a laptop as a mobile device provided by the town, when that employee is at home working from home on the town computer, right? We got to have a clarification on that. Yeah. So, can we go to section eight? Discipline dispute resolution grievance. So, the first sentence under responsibility complicate things because there are certain positions where the, I think, the dis disciplinary actions would not come from the select board. The ones that I can think about would be. Um, for instance, the water superintendent, right, is, yes. is uh, under the authority of the water commissioners. The, right. the library director and library employees are under the, the direction of the, of the library trustees. And I even think that it may even be that the assistant assessors under the direction of the board of assessors who can hire and Hiring, hiring, fire. Um, so I think we just need to. We need an org chart. <laughs> we We're to... big enough to have an org chart. <laughs> so we need to just be. Uh, we need to come up with wording that doesn't say. Whoever your whoever is being disciplined is the person that is responsible for them. I don't know. There's got to be a way you can come up with a learning. Yeah, but it, I agree. You can't just say the select board, and it can't just say the town administrator. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think sort of in some cases the responsibility might cascade, like if the first um person who might be in charge of uh, disciplining um can't do it or fails to do it it could it could cascade to somebody else um i yeah, took that to mean the select board is ultimately responsible overall but uh, like, we're not responsible for any of the discipline at this like the elementary school so mm -hmm. That's kind of, well, the, although the elementary school, I guess it's all separate from this anyway. Uh, so I wonder if a table might be um, a good way to put that, because I think for many of these, ultimately the select board might have to be called in. But I think most of them, there's a couple stops before you would get there. 
When I read through the section, I just kept writing, is this how it actually works? Because it seems like this might come from the outside consultants or do, do we have one of these policies in place in our own policies existing? Because I just wondered if yeah. it is actually how it actually works. There is something works. in our view, it's pretty, I don't, it's not very, it's not very well, I mean, Brian, I can see you made changes about Cobra and other things, so you must think it's pretty close to how it actually does work. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about an issue that 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 I've been thinking about in relation to this the policy and it's the differences between policies and bylaws. At some point in the past, the town used to have a personnel bylaw that was part of the code that was adopted by the residents. At some point, that was taken out um, and it was made a personnel policy, which is adopted by the select board. And so, for instance, I'll use the, the water superintendent. If the water commissioners don't, ex there's nothing that I know of that would make the water commissioners need to comply with the select board policy, the personnel policy, um, because it's sort of thinking about how everything is laid out and water commissioners are elected, the select board elected water commissioners have the authority to hire and fire a, a water superintendent. So with the water commissioners and select board being co-equal, um, I don't know that this personnel policy in its current in its, its current version as a as a policy of the select board could could control what the water commissioners do. Um, and in that case, do we are, is the town in a situation where there's different rules for different employees, um, which gets back to a, an initial question about whether there needs to be, whether this should be a, a, a personnel bylaw or, or there needs to be some type of joint adoption by, you know, the water commissioners and the select board and where everybody sort of signs on to and, and, and adopts these policies so that they're uniform. I think that would be the other approach where um, an issue came up with, with, with pay earlier this year, uh, where the water commissioners uh, changed the pay rate of, of their employee um, sort of after the after the personnel committee went through the process. And um, it, it was, there was just, it, it, there was no process. It, it didn't really follow the process that's, that's laid out. Um, so it's just, I think, something to think about is the, Sort of how this is set up. Right. That's interesting. So it's almost like I think you're right. It's it maybe there's something in the existing law that means if the select board's going to make a policy, it's only going to apply to the employees that the select board is responsible over. And I think um it certainly doesn't apply to the schools. We don't have responsibility over those employees. Uh, I think water commissioner, the other example would be the librarian, right? Yeah, um, are there any other people who... Assessors. Assistant assessor. The assessor is governed by the assessors. Um, then, and if this were a bylaw instead of a policy, um, I mean, the downside is every stinking change you want to make has to go to town meeting, right? If it's a bylaw. Uh, but if it's a bylaw, then it would apply to the library, the assessors, and the water commissioners. And maybe there's some that we're forgetting. Yeah. I mean, but at the same point in time, if the, we'll go back to the water commissioners, if they don't agree to adopt this, then they don't even have their their employee has no personal policy. Period. There's 
There's yeah. nothing. They have nothing. The really same thing with a librarian. How do they, if the librarian, we have to provide something. If the librarian has a, a disagreement with their supervisor, they have no recourse. There's nothing. Yeah. It's, it's got to, we think an employee has to have something given right. to them saying, this is where, this is how it works. I, I, I agree that they should adopt a, a they should adopt our personnel policy because we're going to be so thoughtful about it and we're not going to make any mistakes um, and everybody's going to agree with everything we decide. Um, I guess it could be it could be that they would just say, oh, yeah, you're right. We should adopt something and here's your thoughtful policy. We should just adopt that one. To, um, but it could be that they have disagreements over it as well. And it's sort of not something we necessarily have any power over. No, we don't. The powerful select board. We don't, sounds like we don't really have power over that. And the only, uh, if the only other option is a bylaw, I think, I think that's going to be even. That's going to be more difficult. That's going to. I don't. Be, I don't know that we should go to bylaw before we first ask each of them if they buy into what we're doing you know if they if there are things that don't work for them it's a conversation we should have but for the most part we've done all the work i can't see them completely doing it no but so then they need to accept it and not pick and choose what they want to use and yeah. what they don't want to use we can't have it but the uh, you know, at which point the option is we go to bylaw where we can control right. it. As you, yeah, I, I, well, I think it's really interesting that Brian points this out. And I don't know that there's anything we can do about it other than say, here's our personnel policy. It doesn't apply to your employee, but you should probably have one and feel free to adopt ours. And then that's that's what we can do, right? Mm -hmm. And and I don't I don't think we can or should get too worked up over if they decide they want to do something else. Or if they want to change something, they can have their own personnel policy for their own employee. Because if it's their employee, I mean that's kind of their right. It, right. It's not sensible. And I don't think our assessors are gonna do that, or I don't think our water commissioners will do that. I think they're all sensible people. I think we should try. But it might be that for their for their personnel policy, they have to change the responsibility part to say that the discipline goes to their employer. Does that make sense? Unless we have a joint policy and go back to the idea that somebody put out of having a table of who is the I don't know what to call them, but yeah, the, the, who who is the big honcho for each function? Supervising authority for each right. of the yeah. effort. That sounds yeah. better than honcho. <laughs> or an honcho. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they completely buy into what we've had, we can probably adapt ours by putting in a table and that kind of thing, and then have a consistent language of you know, head honcho, C table on page six. Right. Things worth trying. Right. But meanwhile, we can't do anything until we have ours. Right. Correct. Except for yeah. maybe tell them we're doing it and we want to include them in the process so it doesn't feel like we're trying to yeah. superimpose our policy on them. But again, if those other departments don't have something, then ultimately, if Lawsuits and things like that come down the bike. It's all it's coming out of the town's pocket coffers. This is this is in place to protect mm -hmm. protect uh -huh. employees and the employer. And if some departments to say we don't need that. Well, as someone said, hopefully they're reasonable. They have the same 
goals at heart, which is protecting the town and protecting the town's employees and promoting, you know, goodwill and all that. Yeah. It just, it, it kind of affects how we write this section on responsibility. Right. Right. Um, Could I guess, this be a discussion that the select board wants to take as a group and then from that point take it to the other elected officials? I mean, I mean, ultimately, we're we're going to report to the select board. Yeah. So I guess I'm just thinking that the select board should reach out to the the water department or the water commissioners, the um, library trustees, and the board of assessors, and say we're revamping this. Do you are you on board and accepting it after we? Hmm. Yeah, there would be the board of assessors you go to, not the actual their employee. They have one employee, right? Yeah. yeah. So this affects a total of three, maybe four employees. There's two people at the library, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I bet we could get a selectman to liaise with those folks it would mean oh, sorry, somebody going to another meeting and just getting on their agenda and uh, yeah but again, yeah, yeah. probably yeah. would make sense if i'm the person who does that for those three groups yeah, you can answer questions that the others right. can't know what we're doing right it, and it may very well be that what what we would talk to them about with them not having to comply with the personnel policy would be news to them. So, <laughs> right, um, right. So I well, of course they could hear this recording and they would know that too. We could just put it in our table and pretend like we have we have the right to do that. <laughs> uh, you know, head in the sand works so well, right? All right, so I'll I'll take a crack at setting this up. Um, an org chart would definitely be helpful. Yeah, and then we can take that approach to initial initially. All right, because in an org chart, the librarian and their assistant and the library trustees are kind of a separate org chart because the library trustees aren't under the select board. As far as I know, they're not. Right. They're the elected way. separately, and they can they can get to do what they want. Um, okay. Oh. Um. Two. Uh. Who talks about at will employment, progressive discipline? talks about a public hearing. Four talks about an appeal. I'm just noticing the language on the public hearing. When the appointing authority, which is to whatever they, they're doing, is that concept of the appointing authority what we're talking about with you know, the library trustees, the board of assessors, et cetera? So in some, if that's the case, then we are already treating parts of this document as if we have authority over them. Yeah, I mean, they're, so they're pretty much, uh, they're pretty much quoting the Executive session law here. I mean, that's pretty much verbatim the, the statute. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and, uh, and there's a, a comment about open session. Yeah, I'm not questioning what they're saying about public hearings or appeal. I'm just 
from the document standpoint, if we are referencing employment authority, are we assuming over others? But if it's by law, then it's appropriate to do so because we don't have a choice. I almost use that same word back in the first sentence of responsibility. That's kind of what I'm getting yeah. at is if so that's the point thing authority is responsible for overall disciplinary actions. And then that covers yeah, that's that's so where I'm going. Where right. I'm going. Yeah. Let's do, yeah. I too am tired of this game. The brain is always working. That works. More talk about appeal. You guys check out the final. I mean, I was wondering if that's referring to the thing that you talked about or yeah. Then we talked about employee grievance and dispute resolution. Sort of set up a. Uh, Really almost a fourth year process here, where it's like um, got from the department head, then uh, for the, then the town administrator, then the personnel committee, and then the select board. Um, but these don't have to do with uh, termination, right? This isn't discipline or termination. This is. And again, this is all set for the employees that are under the select board. Right. It's not going to work for necessarily like the water is going to be better. Because it's the same person, multiple levels? Yeah, well, in there. They would sort of have to agree that they would have to, they'd have to adopt this process essentially, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So instead of select board, it might be appointing authority or something. Again, maybe that's appointing authority. Take the word select board out of it. Yeah. Then it gives example of uh, valid complaints, examples of valid complaints. And then I guess non valid complaints. And I don't like those words. There's got to be a better way to say that. And also, I think on number two, rather than saying, Non valid complaints involve the following. They probably say include. And I don't even know that I, I don't even like the whole non valid complaints concept, but if we're going to have it, I would change the word involved to include because it's obviously not an exhaustive list. Yeah. 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 So do we want to strike the non-valid complaints? Well, I, I mean, I know what it's trying to say, like complaints that we don't have jurisdiction over, complaints we won't entertain, but I, yeah, I just don't. Yeah, I, I don't. There are non-valid complaints and I don't like the classification, but if that's how it works in the real world on the ground, then okay, but I sort of doubt it. I think by having, because we cannot have an exclusive, a uh, totally inclusive list there, <clears throat> it's opening us up to trouble because somebody can raise something that says, well, that's not listed as not valid, therefore um, it should be okay. Versus if we don't have not valid, we are in a position to argue that things that are not on the valid list, whether we thought of them here or not, don't cut it. Right. And like, just say 2B, that just by way of example, could, you know, couldn't that cover a wide variety of things that actually we would want to address if, you know, I, you know, if there's conditions of employment that are unbearable, it does seem like that should be a valid complaint. I, I, so I'm not, yeah, I didn't, I just didn't like the, I wrote the word awkward, but it's more than awkward. It doesn't seem, Helpful to you. Do we have the list of non violence? Do they help us? 
I mean, at the first tier of the four steps that you just said, wouldn't any supervisor or boss want their employee to come to them with a complaint? And if they say it's ridiculous or invalid, deal with it at that level. But right. I mean, that number two, couldn't it be I am um, working in the town office and it's 105 degrees every day because the heating system isn't working? You know, that's a condition of working. Maybe it doesn't fit under there, but it just doesn't seem like. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. That would my example wouldn't fit under B, but I'm just saying it seems it doesn't seem helpful. But I could be missing something, and I'm not on the ground, so it does. Again, uh, what do we have in there right now? I will. I don't know. Differentiate. Non-valid. Can't input. Can't. Do you want any employee to come to you with a complaint? And if it's not valid, you'll explain to them why it's not valid. It right. just seems like to have a list of things that you can't go to your supervisor about. Seems too, too hard to define well and. Yeah, I, I don't know that. Mr. I see you took over there. Take that whole number two out. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, and then the valid complaints are including but not limited to, so you got the whole world out there of other complaints. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably good. All right, someone needs to go at 7 30. So, thank you, Joyce. What, what's our next next homework assignment and next meeting? Well, we have the appendices left. And do right. we want to chunk those down? Do you want to look by those certain amounts? So, yeah, that's how we have to go through the same number of pages all over again. Um, so, uh, 51 to 93. So, yeah, it's 42 pages of appendices. And if you can find appendix B, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you want to take off of them for next time? Yeah. That makes sense to me. So, it's halfway. Okay. Okay. Are we uh are we looking at dates? Well, look, right now we're looking at which of the appendices we will review for our next meeting. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let's go ahead. To page seventy is where we should stop. Seventy-five or six. So. What A through K? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. If they don't get to K, we'll pick it up K. the next time. Yeah. All right. All right. Next meeting. Okay. Pick with Mondays. Um, that's fine. We're with me. And we did the two weeks uh, interval here. Uh, the fifth might be tough for me. Um, yeah, I'm actually just arriving back from a trip on that day. And I don't know what time. Uh, I might get back in time for a 6 p.m. meeting. Well, probably the 12th. That's fine. 12, 6 p.m. Okay. Okay. Then do I have a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Motion made, seconded to adjourn. Roll call vote. Joyce. Aye. 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 Joyce. A
Hi. Betty. Hi. Susan. Hi. Sorry. And I'm Brenda. sorry. I'm fighting with my thumb to schedule the And myself. Hi. All right. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Okay.